dropped grandpa off over at our house to get the loader and bring that back to the farm. I cleaned out the inside of that dryer and uh, grandpa and I are going to finish hauling out whatever corn is left in that south bin. It should only take about 10 minutes to clean it out but then there's about three loads that uh, we put in that holding bin out of that bin that we need to haul out. We'll just take those more likely up to Union then. And Dad is going to head over to Clarence's and finish up that 10 acres by himself because there's really no need necessarily to have the cart over there. So I'm taking my truck over to the rye field and Dad's going to pick me up and take me over to Clarence's also. And I'm going to empty out that grain cart, bring that grain cart over here, head back to the farm, help Grandpa clean that bin out and I've got a list of stuff I need to do on the dryer and around the bin site mostly just greasing bearings and oiling chains and fix a couple of things by our dump pit then and then later we'll clean that dump pit out and get ready to pick some corn today hopefully on ours. Yep, turn to on, and I'll take that one. I just need the one can, and see where this grease circ is. Okay, go ahead and kick the load auger on. everything greased, oiled, and ship shape at our bin site. Right now, Dad and I are moving over to the 40 on the corner of Grandpa's field, and this is actually the first corn that we planted. I couldn't tell you for sure the exact planting date. It was 
either right at the end of April or the 1st of May. This is going to be one of the fields that we pushed hard under irrigation. We did four, yeah, four fertigation applications with the pivot. And uh, we actually did some when it was only like V3 or V4. So it'd be real interesting to see what kind of response we're going to get from this. The corn looks extremely good. Uh, we do have a couple of other irrigated fields that we pushed also, but not as hard. This will be Pioneer 1197. Pretty much everything that we have under irrigation right now is 1197. There is a field though that we have a split, well probably a third and two thirds, a third of it 825 and uh, the other two thirds being 1197 and dad completely forgot about that split and I remembered it from uh, since we moved over to that field to plant and we walked out in there to compare and holy cow it's going to be close but my money's on 1197 when we get out in that field because it hides its yield and it looks really good even though that 825 is looking extremely good also. broke open. I don't know, duct tape is definitely holding up on that feeder house. We lost a feeder house cover. I'm guessing Dad did earlier today on clearances on Mars. And nobody has it. Nobody. Castonia's doesn't. Greenmark doesn't. So we would have to order it. So we'll get it ordered tomorrow. But in the meantime, good old duct tape works good. Probably 280 bushel plus corn. That would ought to do it. This is awesome. I would guess we're going to average about 275. Yeah, I said 280. Be pretty close. As you just heard dad, after picking the dry corners, we would have picked about 75 bushel corn here without the irrigator. Before the irrigator, dad told me one time we picked, the lowest yield we ever picked on this field was 30 bushel average. Easy math on that, 30 bushel per acre at uh, 40 acres, that's only 1200 bushel. That's one truckload, at least with our trucks. That's that's terrible. We figure by having this irrigator on this field, it has at least tripled, if not quadrupled, the yield potential on this field. It's unbelievable what we figured out between not only having the irrigator, the irrigator is not just the ticket to this high yielding corn on this sand. What we found is by working with our soil guys heavily, they've helped us tremendously and have opened our eyes in regards to 
fertility and management on this ground with the irrigators. By using the fertilizer injector pump to be able to do split nitrogen applications through the pivot and not only nitrogen but also potassium. Next year we're going to be looking at possibly doing uh, some sulfur through the pivot because we actually did one, no, yeah we did one application at V3 or V4 through the irrigator with some thiosol with the nitrogen and it worked great I feel and I want to start spoon feeding not only the nitri nitrogen, not only the potassium, but also the sulfur because I feel we're missing the boat by not spoon feeding that sulfur out here with the nitrogen and the potash. So we're going to see what this field does. I'm thinking 280, Dad's going to say about 275, but there's prob we've probably only picked about six acres out of this 40, so there's a lot more corn to go through yet.